Hey everyone, and welcome back. The 1960s, the decade that was definitely a breakthrough for giant monster films. You had Godzilla movies getting released almost every year, you had Big G imitators emerging left and right, and of course it was also the decade that brought King Kong back into the mainstream for a while. There of course was the two Toho films, various comic book series, and of course the subject for this video, The King Kong Show, which ran from September of 1966 to the following year of 67 with a total of 24 episodes. The show was created by Videocraft International, which would be later retitled to Rankin Bass Productions, named after the founders of the company, Arthur Rankin Jr. and Julius Bass. The company is mostly known for their holiday Christmas specials, like Frosty the Snowman, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Sometime around the mid-60s, Rankin Bass approached RKO General, the rights holders to Kong at the time, to do an animated series around the Big Ape. RKO agreed to the project under the condition they can also produce a live-action film of Kong that loosely connects to the show. More on that later. The cartoon was greenlit and the team wasted no time to get the show on the air. Jack Davis stepped up to work on the early designs of the characters and even Kong himself, and Rod Willis stepped in afterwards to finalize on how the series would end up looking. The stories were then written to have Kong face off not just against dinosaurs, but aliens, natural disasters, and other giant creatures. After the basic setup was complete, Rankin Bass then outsourced the animation to an overseas studio in Japan called Toei Doga, who are now known today as Toei Animation, the same studio that is responsible for getting iconic animes made such as Sailor Moon, One Piece, and Dragon Ball. Rankin Bass would actually outsource a lot of their animated projects over in Japan, including their stop-motion ones like Rudolph. However, the King Kong show has the honor of being the first fully animated series to be done in Japan, but made for America. But that didn't mean it never aired in Japan. Toei reached an agreement with Rankin Bass to claim distributor rights to air the series in Japan, under the extra-long title, King of the World, The King Kong Show. The main theme song for the show was done by veteran composer Murray Laws. I'd play the song for you here, but copyright reasons prevent me from doing so, but you can't find it on YouTube with a quick search, so... It's a pretty catchy theme, if nothing else, and if you plan on marathoning the show, this song is definitely gonna get stuck in your head for a while. The series centers around the Bond family. Yes, you heard right, the Bond family. And no, they're not a family full of secret agents, but instead consists of a single dad archaeologist with his two children, Susan and Bobby. They also tag along with a sea captain named Engelhorn, based on the character of the same name from the original King Kong. Often at times they'd be trapped or threatened by series mainstay villain, Doctor Who. Yes, you heard that right too, Doctor Who. The series finally premiered on September 6, 1966 on the ABC channel with other Saturday morning cartoons. The show ran for 24 episodes, with each one containing two Kong stories per episode, as well as an unrelated show that played in between the Kong segments called Tom of Thumb, which was a series about two guys who got shrunken down to size and became secret agents to handle random tasks set by their chief. It's a pretty funny cartoon from what I've seen of it, but we're not going to talk about any of that here. Supposedly, its random inclusion was due to the popularity of the spy genre at the time. I guess that could explain the surname of our main cast. Now, because the episodes have two stories apiece, I'll be referring to the segments as Story A and Story B for the reviews. Also, with the stories being around 6-7 to seven minutes long, reviews for each one is going to be pretty short and to the point. Anyway, with that said, let's start with the pilot episode. Please consider both liking and subscribing. It really helps. I should note real fast that the pilot was originally a one-hour special when it premiered, and later reruns of the show would split it up into two separate episodes, A Friend in Need and Key to the City. But for the sake of this video, I will be looking at it here as it was originally premiered. The story starts with our characters on what I thought was Skull Island, but as it turns out, this place is called Mondo Island, a new fictional island made for the show. It's basically like Skull Island, just minus the natives. Anyway, the Bond family are here, 
to search for some type of moss, Bobby wanders further into the island and encounters a bunch of prehistoric creatures, and eventually Kong, who manages to save him from the most dopiest T-Rex imaginable. Uh, should I eat the kid or should I just wait? After the battle, Kong befriends the boy. And this is probably the most friendliest Kong I know of, given how quickly he warms up to humans. Especially to a male, as Kong has shown in many iterations to be more cozy around women than he is men. Bobby introduces Kong to the rest of the cast, who take a bit of a shock at first like anyone would, but quickly, and I mean quickly, warm up to Kong. Mr. Bond then gets the idea that he wants to run some tests on Kong, but can't do them here. So a plan is set up to take Kong off the island and sail him across to Virginia. Along the way, they encounter a ship that's in danger from an octopus-looking creature called the Kraken. Kong gets angry and jumps into action to fend off the giant cephalopod. It's interesting to note that this fight sequence over the ocean while transferring Kong would be played out in a similar fashion 55 years later in Godzilla vs. Kong. And look at that, we even get a shot of the monsters battling underwater. I don't mean to say this is where the movie got the idea from, and I'm sure it's only a coincidence. After the fight, the crew get back on track, but soon enter a bad storm, and unfortunately can't progress without letting Kong go. Bobby, of course, doesn't want to do it, but Anglehorn persuades Bobby into doing what he believes is the right call. Basically telling Bobby it's either Kong or it's everyone else's lives on the ship. They could have just had Anglehorn be a mean crazy man, simply wanted to save his and everyone's lives, but they give him some depth here with him giving Bobby that decision, given his newly found friendship with Kong. Bobby ultimately makes the choice to let Kong go, and Kong just seems okay with it. The next morning, everyone's okay and back on land, and that includes Kong, who swam all the way to New York. His appearance, of course, causes a panic, and the military arrive right on scene to try and stop him. Now, if you're expecting a bloody violent battle here, well try to remember this is a kid's cartoon. So it's only gonna get as violent as it can get. And by that, I mean not much at all. Kong grabs Susan and makes his way to the Empire State Building and climbs it for no real reason. In the original novel and movie, Kong only climbed the building because he used to live on tall mountains back on Skull Island. The higher he was, the safer he felt. I didn't really get that feeling from this Kong since we never see him on mountains. But honestly, this is just some innocent little callback to the film, so... I'm okay with it. Kong knocks down a jet which smashes into a bridge causing the support beams to start snapping. Bobby finally gets to Kong and persuades him to save the people on the bridge, which he does and causes everyone to just instantly like him. Sure, okay. Hell, they even hold a ceremony for him and give him the key to the city. I mean, he was the one who caused all this havoc in the first place, including the bridge getting destroyed, but whatever. The pilot episode is a really nice start to the series, but the later portion of it can kind of drag on a bit with nothing really happening until the end. I mean, unless you like seeing Kong walking around Manhattan for a lengthy minute. Episode 1, Under the Volcano. The Bond family come to a volcano they believe to be inactive, and venture inside to see if there's any chance of it coming back to life. While searching, they run into an underground civilization called Volcania, run by this fellow named Vestus, who looks like he belongs in a D&D story rather than a Kong one. Vestus explains his evil plan to rule the world, and captures the Bond family minus Bobby, who runs to get Kong. As the big guy enters the scene, he's quickly captured with a very big net. They then chain Kong up for some reason, and begin to start killing the family off one by one. Kong of course breaks free, saves the family, and flings a boulder inside the volcano which for some reason explodes. <laughs> Ending the race, that was Volcania. An interesting little thing I noticed in this episode is when Dr. Bond says he wants to get back to Skull Island before dark. I was always under the impression the island we see in the pilot was Skull Island, but Bobby mentions later that it was called Mondo Island, which is the island we're set on for the rest of the series. I'm just guessing that maybe the Skull Island mention was just a goof up in the script. Episode 1B, The Treasure Trap. On a cool sunny day, Kong and Bobby are enjoying a nice swim until Bobby discovers a sunken ship. He then tells his dad and Susan if they want to explore the vessel, but they got their own priorities, so Bobby ventures alone. A minor earthquake hits the island and Bobby soon gets trapped under the ship. But Kong comes along for the save and as it turns out, there was nothing but old silverware down there. This is honestly one of the more boring episodes of the show, especially in the B plot where Kong just holds a rope for a majority of the time here. Both segments really don't have anything worth highlighting here, so hopefully the rest of the show can pick up the slack on this one. Episode 2, The Horror of Mondo Island. 
So a rare type of metal called Phantasium has been discovered on Mondo Island, and a team of excavators enter illegally to try and dig up the metal. Bobby for some reason paints Kong white in an attempt to scare off the miners. The leader of the group fights back with an excavator, but Kong manages to destroy the machine and scare off the miners, only burning his foot in the process. I still don't understand why Bobby had to paint him white though. In the preview for this episode, I thought this was a new monster. Episode 2B Doctor Who. We're finally introduced to the series mainstay villain, Doctor Who. Not sure if he was named after THE Doctor Who, but who knows. Anyway, the Doctor meets up with the Bond family and asks to take Kong on some vague trip. Bobby quickly refuses, causing Doctor Who to snap and then hold the family at gunpoint. Boy, they sure don't make cartoons like they used to. Doctor Who then goes out to find Kong and gas him up, but leaves the family guarded with the most dopiest guy help could find. I don't know how Doctor Who manages to hire his men, but you can definitely tell he was desperate here. Susan manages to spill coffee on the oaf, and Dr. Bond gives us the most action-packed scene this episode has to offer. Elsewhere, Doctor Who puts Kong to sleep and carries him off to his ship. You see, Doctor Who wants to use Kong to rule the world, or destroy it as he says. Why or how that was going to work remains a mystery, as Kong manages to wake up and destroy the ship with Doctor Who just leaving. Episode 3, Rocket Island. Doctor Who returns with a single minion and manages to take control of the Cosmodome and its crew hostage. The Doctor plans to use the rocket, which has a thermonuclear device planted inside it, to launch at a populated city unless he is paid the large amount of... One million dollars. Okay, well it's actually 10 million he wanted. Kong shows up and Doctor Who's one and only defender tries to fight him off. It's kind of amazing this one man has no fear of Kong, but that alone isn't going to be enough to stop him. Episode 3B, The African Bees. The African bees are said to be the most deadliest type of bees known to man. They've been said to actually destroy resources in nature, and even on record have actually killed people, giving them the nickname of the killer bee. In this show, they're slightly more bigger than the normal size insect, and these ones can also travel along sea. I'm no expert in bees, so if you guys know if they can actually manage to do that, please let me know, I'd love to know myself. Anyway, the bees make their way to Mondo Island and start destroying the place. The family and Kong take shelter from them, but some Dimidon looking fella arrives randomly on the island and gets attacked by his agent. Kong emerges and comes up with an idea to lure the bees into giant carnivorous plants, killing all the bees and saving the island. Episode 3 definitely has more going for it than its previous two episodes, but also has a lot of very awkward edits. And the sounds the bees make sound more like aliens more so than bees. Mm. Episode 4, The Hunter. A big time hunter named Ulrich von Kramer secretly travels to Mondo Island in an attempt to hunt Kong down. Von Kramer has the big ape in his sights for the kill, but like any uptight hunter, von Kramer seeks the thrill of the hunt. So he reveals himself to both Bobby and Kong and threatens to kill Kong if Bobby doesn't listen to his demands. Kramer then uses Bobby as bait for Kong to save him from an angry triceratops, to which Kong does come for the rescue. This is also Kong's first fight with another creature since the pilot episode. The battle ends with Kong's victory and the big guy chases after Von Kramer who manages to get stuck in quicksand. Episode 4B the Spaceman. This episode sees the return of Captain Englehorn. Well, actually he made a brief appearance in the B episode, but it really wasn't worth mentioning. So Mr. Bond and Susan go off on a trip somewhere to collect specimens, and leaves Englehorn to, I guess, babysit Bobby and Kong. While the three play hide and seek, a flying saucer comes from the sky and is being controlled by these golden robotic looking aliens. They look as though C-3PO and a whistle just did the fusion dance. Anyway, the aliens speak in some type of language which goes untranslated for us Earthling viewers, but once they get to Earth, they start speaking in English thanks to a translator they have. Now, being aliens, they of course want to conquer the planet. Kong denies that and chews them away. Episode 5, The Jinx of the Sphinx. Our characters this time travel to Africa and search for the reason on why ships have gone missing. I don't really see how this is their problem though. Up till now they've only been archaeologists and all of a sudden they want to start
start solving mysteries. Sure, why not? I also like how comically Kong is just chilling on the boat here. Anyway, the missing ships were caused by a mechanical sphinx being controlled by Doctor Who, giving us our first original creature of the show. This thing has eye beams, which seems to dissolve pretty much anything, which isn't good for these unfortunate fellows. Kong manages to find the sphinx, and the two give us a decent monster brawl, with Kong coming out the victor, and Doctor Who gets away again. Episode 5B, The Green-Eyed Monster. The title of this segment is very misleading. It makes you think that there's going to be an actual monster for Kong to fight with, but no. The story here is about Captain Englehorn's dog named Holly, who ends up taking a liking to Bobby. Englehorn lets the dog stay on Mondo Island for a while with the Bonds, but the only problem with that is that Kong actually frightens the little dog, causing Bobby to shoo him off. Kong gets jealous and I think actually tries to kill the dog by luring it to a bunch of hungry predators, including a giant vulture which looks like it's wearing a fez. The vulture grabs the dog and Kong has an instant change of heart and goes back to save Holly. Episode 5 is so far my favorite of the series, to which both segments A and B have decently engaging stories, with an action-themed episode and a heartwarming one. This one's definitely worth checking out if you can. Episode 6, The Top of the World. Again, the family does more traveling, this time to Alaska to find out why a lot of the ice is starting to melt and flood up areas. Again, I don't see how this is the problem an archaeologist is going to solve, but whatever. Anyway, it turns out Doctor Who is behind this and has made a machine brilliantly called the Meltifier. Kong breaks into Doctor Who's base, destroys the contraption, and all of the Western Hemisphere is saved. Sort of. Episode 6B, The Golden Temple. Okay, now this is a weird one. So the show begins with Bobby fishing, and he manages to catch supposedly a rare type of fish called... however Bobby pronounces it here. Ixilox. He keeps it in a drawer for some reason, and Susan finds it and gets ready to cook it up for a meal. Upon cutting it open, she finds a small golden statue inside it and shows her dad. It turns out the statue was from an ancient temple called Uni. Mr. Bond's very intrigued by this and dives down to see if he can find the temple. Which he does, but it's being blocked by an underwater whirlpool. Also, there's a lot of man-eating sharks down there. But Mr. Bond really wants to get near that temple. So much so that he pulls out a knife and kills one of the sharks. The scene just comes out of nowhere. Up to this point in the show, it's always no killing things. Killing is bad. But here, Mr. Bond throws that statement out the window. He really wants to get to that temple. Thankfully, he's buddies with a giant gorilla who has the strength to surface the undersea structure with ease. One more thing worth mentioning here is Kong's eerie sounding laugh he does at the end. Why? Episode 7A, The Electric Circle. An evil man named Dr. Lubub sets course to Mondo Island, but for some reason he calls it Skull Island. So I'm confused, is this Skull Island or is it Mondo Island? Or are they just the same island? Anyway, Dr. Lubub invites Mr. Bond to, well, basically die. But Bond whistles for Kong, and I find it incredibly charming that Bond is just sipping some coffee while Kong comes to save him. Not giving up. The doctor kidnaps Bobby and uses him as bait to lure Kong into an electrical trap. But thanks to the efforts of a wild triceratops, Kong is able to rescue Bobby and safely shoo away the bad guys off the island. Also, did you know that triceratopses are very vicious creatures, according to Dr. Bond? Vicious animal in the world. He doesn't kill for food, he kills for pleasure. Episode 7B, Mirror of Destruction. So the family this time take a cruise to San Francisco to meet up with an old friend of Mr. Bond. Kong swims there, and I know what some gorilla experts are going to say, if they hadn't already said it, gorillas aren't adapt swimmers. I knew this bit of information right from the pilot episode, but came to the realization that this is a kid's cartoon about a giant ape. So scientifically speaking, who really cares? Anyway, the group meet up with Dr. Norton, who isn't acting shady in the least, and tells Bond and Susan to come with him, but leaves Kong and Bobby behind. And surprise, surprise, the whole thing was a trap set up by Doctor Who, taking the family hostage and tries to lure Kong into a death trap. Didn't the writers already come up with this idea in the same exact episode? Episode 8, Tiger Tiger. Or as the episode should say, characters making dumb decisions. The family this time venture to the North Pole and search for two perfectly preserved saber-toothed tigers trapped in a sheet of ice. A wondrous scientific discovery for sure, so 
So, what did they do? Why, logically, you need to unfreeze them. I'm sure nothing bad will come of that. Well, sure enough, something bad does happen. The tigers are set free and start causing havoc because this guy fell asleep with a flamethrower. How does that even happen? The group then huddle up to plan their attack by having Dr. Bond and this guy venture out to find and I guess kill the big cats. Do they bring Kong along? No. This is Dr. Bond's problem and he needs to take care of it himself. Bobby of course thinks that's stupid and ventures out with Kong to see if they can help. They find Bond in a cave and realize that he wants to trap himself inside it with the tigers so they can do no more harm. So was he planning on Anglehorn taking care of his kids then? It doesn't matter anyway since the tigers manage to escape and brawl with Kong who takes them out with ease. Later I guess they kill the tigers and use their fur to make a scarf for Kong. What a great use of a scientific discovery. Episode 8B, The Vise of Doctor Who. The group this time are invited to a children's home to uh... Well, that doesn't go explain. They enter it, and surprise, surprise, it was all a trap by Doctor Who. What a twist! Bobby and Kong enter the room soon after and see Susan, Dr. Bond, and Anglehorn captured. Dr. Who plans on either freezing or burning them alive if Kong doesn't obey his commands. Bobby's then put in the torture room and Dr. Who proceeds in killing the group by way of crushing them. Anglehorn punches Bobby, to which angers Kong, to bash open the room and save everyone but Anglehorn, who is basically blackmailed to help them get out. What is it, Kong? What do you want? Bobby, can you figure out what this animal wants? That's easy, Sue. He wants what everyone else wants. This. Before going into the next episode, I need to make clear that it's going to be a bit difficult reviewing the rest of the show from here on out. As of this video, which is premiering on February 2022, the complete series of the show has not gotten any sort of full release yet and neither is streaming on any platforms. In fact, a good chunk of the show is actually considered lost and can't be viewed anywhere. And the ones I was able to find are just really bad TV rips. I guess I can at least say it's better than nothing. As of now, the episode titles you're seeing on screen here are the episodes I wasn't able to recover for this video, so I will be unfortunately skipping them. With all that said, let's get back into the series. Episode 9A, King Kong's House. So Bond and Bobby are about to have a father-son expedition day, and Bobby gets a slick new vest for the adventure, including a very familiar device that when pressed, can call Kong, or annoy him I guess. If you didn't pick up on that, I'm referring to the Godzilla signal from the Hanna-Barbera cartoon, that when active, can send a signal to call out for Godzilla. So I guess Kong came up with this idea first. Also, I don't know if this could have been the inspiration for that or not, it could just be a coincidence. Anyway, Mr. Bond and Bobby get trapped in a cave with a hungry Tyrannosaur, but Kong comes for the rescue thanks to the help of the device. Episode 9B, Mechanicon. Mechanicong is one of the things this show is actually best known for, thanks in part to his inclusion in the Toho films that leads back to this. I'll get into that in a bit. So the military come to Mondo Island in search to destroy Kong, because they believe he's responsible for an attack on New Guinea. Given a chance to clear his name, Kong is taken off the island to do battle with his doppelganger, off the coast of New Guinea. Also, I believe this is the first and only episode to have a title card explain where we are. If you couldn't guess from the title, it turns out the attacker was Mechanicong being operated by Doctor Who. Kong tries to fight back, but his strength alone does more harm than good. Speaking of Mechanic Kong, I guess I should finally talk about the live-action film now. So when Rankin Bass got the okay to do the show from RKO General, they were also tasked to do a live-action film based on the cartoon. I wish I could say the process for that was simple, but the story is quite confusing when you really dig into it. To start, back when Toho did King Kong vs. Godzilla, which became a major success, Toho had plans to do a series of Kong films while they still had the rights to use the character. They started working on a second film called Operation Robinson Crusoe, King Kong vs. Ebita, written by Shinichi Sekizawa. Toa was very confident that the film was going to be made, that they already had suits for both kaiju made, as well as some set pieces. However, when discussing things over with RKO General, Toa was turned down for making any more movies with King Kong. Producer Tomiyuki Tanaka asked RKO if they could at least make one single picture to cope with the cost of the suits that were already made. They were granted at least that, and King Kong Escapes would end up being that one single picture. But that's just one of the two tales that lead into this movie. The other, and more likely story, was that RKO had set Rankin Bass up with Toho to do a co-production on the film. The original story, of course, was King Kong vs. Ebita, which also featured other monsters Kong was to brawl with, like a giant condor, and surprisingly even Mothra. Jun Fukuda was even approached to direct the film, 
making it his kaiju debut. However, Arthur Rankin Jr. was dissatisfied in the project, claiming it had no real connections to the show and just felt like a schlocky monster movie. Apparently, there was also some displeasement that Ishiro Honda, the director of several early Godzilla movies, including the original, wasn't attached to the project. Toho now had to scramble back to square one to come up with a new story to Rankin Bass's liking, and to have Ishiro Honda direct it. The Ebita story, however, wouldn't be for nothing, as Kong was just simply substituted out for Godzilla. And the film Godzilla, Ebita, Mothra, The Great Duel in the South Seas was made. Despite the movie never going on to be a Kong picture, promotional material in certain territories still put a Kong-like creature on some of the posters and lobby cards, adding a lot of confusion to anyone who had seen the movie after viewing the poster. Godzilla's name, however, did still maintain itself on these. To add to some more confusion, Fukuda has mentioned in interviews that the first draft he saw for the movie always had Godzilla in the script and not Kong, though he could just simply be misremembering things. Anyway, Toho's second attempt at the movie proved to be more successful, featuring many elements from the cartoon, including the evil Doctor Who, played by Hideo Amamoto, and his robotic giant, Mechanicon, also taken from the show. The co-production was a success, giving us King Kong's Counterattack, or King Kong Escapes as it was better known in the West. The movie's not known to be one of Toho's better kaiju pictures, but the film is still a worthy watch with a lot of fun moments. But we'll look into this movie another time. Let's get back to the show. Episode 10, Giant Slots. The family this time ventured to an uncharted island to see giant slots. Okay, there might be more to it than that. I'm not sure given this episode is only available in Spanish right now, and since I can't understand the language, I'm not 100% sure on what's going on here. But thankfully you can kinda get what's happening. So the island looks as though it's sinking, and Bond, Susan, and this guy are still on it. Bobby and Kong go to rescue them, and I guess Kong befriends the slots and takes them back to Mondo Island with the rest of the prehistoric animals. Sure hope they don't mind all those carnivores. Episode 11, Dr. Bone. Unfortunate for me, this one's also in Spanish, and is even missing half the episode. So, let's take what we can get. So this guy, Dr. Bone, is a collector of skeletal structures of many sorts, and wants to add King Kong to his collection. He manages to capture Kong, and unfortunately that's all that can be viewed. Episode 12b, Command Performance. This one is also missing half its runtime, but in a reverse order seems to have the second half, rather than the first. So Kong and crew are invited to England, I guess, for Kong to put on a show for the Queen. While doing so, a plan from this slime ball is also put into effect to kidnap the Queen while the show is going on. Episode 15A, The Trojan Horse. We have another Spanish one here, but at least this time it is the full episode. Unfortunate though, unlike the Sloth episode, this one seems to have a lot more going on in it. I'm guessing swindlers are involved or something, I'm not too sure. If you can understand Spanish and can view this episode, let me know what it's about in the comments below. But before moving on to the next episode, I gotta point out that the Kong signal is actually used again. In fact, it does come back here and there in later episodes. So that's interesting, maybe Hanna-Barbera did take the idea. Episode 15b, The Man from Kong. The family this time are taking a bit of R&R, &R, enjoying themselves at some amusement park. Professor Bond is kidnapped and it's up to Kong and an intelligence officer named Austin to try and find the missing father. The family time is charming here, but the Kong action in this one is extremely lacking. Episode 16a, Caribbean Cruise. So in this one, a literal army of rebels are trying to overtake President Mendoza's government in Caramba, with Bon and Susan caught in the crossfire. They send a signal out to Bobby and try and get Kong down to their location to help aid them in the fight. So yeah, this one sees Kong battling an army. Kinda like the Island of Doom episode in the Hanna-Barbera Godzilla show. Only it's not as cool as that one was. Episode 17a, The Great Sunspots. Doctor Who returns and manages to capture Bond, Bobby, and Englehorn, and has made a new machine called the Eclipserizer, a device that's able to either black out or brighten the sun. Of course, Khan comes in and takes it out, and yeah, this just becomes a case of, I've seen this before. At this point in the series, it's an incredibly average episode with nothing even worth mentioning. Episode 20A, The Thousand Year Knockout. The characters this time are invited to Paris for Kong to participate in a parade. Meanwhile, a gargoyle statue that comes to life every thousand years happens to wake up today and starts terrorizing France. Lucky for them though, Kong's in the area and does battle with the Winged Menace. It's not too often we get a good monster fight in this show, and this one really doesn't disappoint. Probably my favorite battle in the whole series. This one's definitely worth checking out. Episode 20B, Desert City. 
Kong Stops Some Bandits. Episode 21B, Kong of Stone. In this one, Professor Bond, Bobby, and Kong are trying to figure out why some of the stone monuments are starting to show erosion. Turns out the problem is from this Merlin the Wizard looking guy throwing acid on the monuments, simply because he wants to have his own face carved up there to rule the country somehow. Admittedly, I'm not too familiar in what these statues are supposed to be, so if anyone has the answer to that, please let me know in the comments below. Overall though, this episode is okay. Episode 22A, A Murderous Maze. Oh boy, another desert themed episode. So the characters this time are invited by a man named Professor Lan. At least I think that's his name. It's really hard to make out with this audio. Lan! He also has an assistant named Boyle, who definitely isn't being shady by any means. They come to the murderous maze and explore it, and surprise, Boyle double-crossed them, and leaves them to die in said murderous maze, which is filled with crocodiles. I guess the crocs should be lucky that this isn't the Dino De Laurentiis Kong. Episode 22B the Great Gold Strike. So everyone, minus Susan for some reason, venture off to some island to see what's causing trouble. Turns out the problem is with a giant yellow cyclops that both steals cattle for food, I guess, and also has a gold fetish. I love gold! Also, could we say animal cruelty here? The Cyclops appearance-wise is definitely not one of the better designs of its kind, and I'm not so much a fan of the whole caveman getup it's got going on here. I don't know, I guess I was just spoiled from the Sinbad Cyclops and how great that one looked. I also gotta say, Professor Bond in this one definitely does not look his best here. Ugh. Episode 23B, Mad Whale. Okay, you're not going to believe what this episode's about. So the characters this time around are trying to find Moby Dick so that they can heal him up from the battles he's had with other sailors. Yes, Moby Dick the sperm whale exists in the King Kong universe. Try and wrap your head around that one. Also, if you ever wanted to see King Kong ride Moby Dick like a horse, well, this is your episode. Episode 24A, The King Kong Diamond. In our final episode here, Professor Bond receives a package from an old friend, which I guess just had a letter in it, asking if he can go to South Africa to help him out about a mining problem, which he accepts and brings his kids and Kong along. Also, I guess Captain Englehorn just lives with the Bonds, as he's just hanging around inside their house. When they arrive, Bond and Bobby venture inside the mine to find out what the problem is and get trapped inside. And yeah, that pretty much becomes the gist of this one. Another recycled story from the King Kong's Home episode. And it's not really an exciting one to end on, especially when all Kong does here is use a pickaxe to try and dig his way to them. Yeah, I know there was one more segment after this one, but right now it's currently unviewable. And that was all the episodes of The King Kong Show, at least ones that were accessible. The King Kong Show is definitely a relic of its time, and honestly, it hasn't aged all that well. A lot of the segments are pretty boring and dull, and Kong half the time doesn't really do anything. In fact, if you're one of those fans who are expecting giant monster brawling every episode, you're going to be very let down by this show, as there's really only a handful of times Kong actually does battle with other creatures. Now, I understand with the time crunch only being 6 minutes per episode, it becomes very difficult to try and tell an exciting story within such a condensed time window. I get it can be done, but you have to realize the writers had to come up with 48 mini stories to tell, and I'm not even sure if that includes the Tom segments. While the King Kong show never really caught on in the mainstream, it did indeed have a small following afterwards. In 1967, Marvel Comics put out a one-shot collection of stories promoting the various Saturday morning cartoons that ran on the ABC channel. Of course, King Kong being one of those tales where he goes to the circus. There were also a few Japanese comics that include this version of Kong, including one where he does battle with the Statue of Liberty, which was turned into a machine by Dr. Who. And of course, there was a small amount of merchandise like a board game and coloring books. There were many other Kong animations afterwards, but this one will always stand out as being the first one to follow the big ape. The show does have its fans out there, but unfortunately, I'm just not one of them. Unlike my Godzilla cartoon reviews, I actually had never watched this show till now, so this is coming from a guy who has no nostalgia for the series. Now, I know throughout the video it sounds like I'm putting the cartoon down a lot, I just have to be honest about my review. I did grow to like this Kong and the other characters, and some of the adventures were okay, but overall I personally don't think the show is all that great. A lot of the stories are dull and some of them are even recycled with just a few tweaks to them. I get it's a kid's cartoon made in the mid 60s, so I'll be a little forgiving on it for that. But you don't have to take my word for it. 
And of course, I always encourage you to watch and judge the show for yourself. Maybe you'll end up liking it more than I did. If you do like the show or have any memories of it, let me know about it in the comments below. I'd love to hear your stories. It's not really a bad cartoon, it's just not my choice for entertainment. Anyways, that'll wrap up this video. Thank you all so much for watching till the end, and until next time, take care. <laughs> what on earth is Kong doing? He's pretending he's watching his favorite movie. Oh, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. It's not so silly. He's got a pretty powerful imagination. See for yourself.